Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship on this Palm Sunday, where we celebrate the remembrance of Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem and then read and reflect on the passion story which guides our week ahead. This week, please also be welcome to join us on wor to worship on Thursday for Maundy Thursday and on Friday for Good Friday. Those worship services will begin at 7 o'clock um, and you are all invited and welcome to join us for that. I also want to invite you to join us after worship for some fun activities. We're going to do some craft work with our palms and do some other fun stuff, so please join us in the social hall following worship. But now I invite you to stand as you are able and turn your attention to the font. Turn and face the font as we begin our worship. And I want to invite the kids to come join us around the font. Come on, kids. And uh, anybody else who wants to join in our palm Yeah, session, anyone who wants to. Come join us. Yeah. I got to get a palm. I didn't get one. I forgot I to grab I think we've got a few. Room. <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on up. You got your palms? Ready? Nice. Very nice. All right. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The people say, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the, the highest. highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the, the highest. highest. This is the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when they were approaching Jerusalem at Beth Veg and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples. And he said to them, go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. So they went away, and they found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. And as the disciples were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told him what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and Jesus sat on it, and many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the field. And then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, O Christ. Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lift up your branches. We're going to bless them now. Here we go. We praise you, God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along the way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of so that joined to his death and resurrection, we end life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us forth in peace in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. We invite you to process around with us. Here we go. Bring your branches. Let's walk around with these branches. And there's more out there.
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The peace of Jesus Christ our Lord be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share this peace with one another. Peace be with you. Now let us continue our worship by drawing near to God in a time of prayer. Trusting in God's promise, to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. Prepare us to bear witness to Christ's suffering and death, endured for our sake. Gather your people around the cross and comfort us with res resurrection hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Establish peace and justice among the nations, especially in Israel, Gaza, and the Ukraine. Hold to account with any authority to judge others. Grant that courts, legislators, and local governments will serve with integrity and compassion. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Bring hope to any who feel forsaken or forgotten. Make a way for refugees and asylum seekers. Reunite families enduring separation. We pray for any who are incarcerated, institutionalized, or in foster care, that they may know your love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Give energy and joy to the workers of your church, the pastors, deacons, worship leaders, administrators, custodians, and musicians. Bless the work of this congregation and of all its ministry partners, our sister in China, Peace Center for the Blind in Jerusalem, and Lutheran Church of Christ in Nigeria. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Fill all those who suffer with your healing presence. Bring peace to the minds of any who struggle with mental illness, addiction, and holiness. And bless all who are ill or healing. Especially today, we pray for those in our midst who are in need of your tender care. Jim and Arlene, Jackie, Christine, Sean, Molly, Brian. Diane, Isaac, Ryan, Don, Chloe and her family, Terry, Robert, Donna, Lisa, Pam, Ted, the Davis Collins and Bierke families, Dean, Bonnie, Charlie, and Mary. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. 
Amen. enter into this telling of the passion throughout the remainder of our worship. Now it was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. And the chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar, a very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you. And you can show kindness to them whenever you wish but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, whatever, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Now as the woman came with her very costly alabaster jar of nard. Let us now come to Jesus with gifts of ridiculous generosity, trusting that no gift given for the continuing mission of God is wasted. <laughs>
Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money, so he began to look for an opportunity to betray them. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one after another, Surely not I, he said to them, it is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Jesus, you prepared this table in the presence of your enemy and betrayer. Prepare it now for us. Teach us to love as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Now, when they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Now Peter said to him, Even though all fall away, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the crock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want.
came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial? The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. Look, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him, Jesus at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. And then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a rebel? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the female servants of the high priest came by. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But Peter denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the female servant, on seeing him, began saying again to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again, Peter denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean and you talk like one. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. 
And Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Jesus, mighty God, Peter is not alone in his sin. Hear us as we confess our sins to you. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Merciful Creator, Loving we Lord, we have sinned against heaven and before you. We claim you by day and yet deny you by night. We sleep, we are weak, we abandon and fail you. There are even times when we betray you by not living as we ought, by selfishness, greed, lust, and pride. We humbly fall before you. Forgive us, O oh God. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply so that Pilate was amazed.
At the festival, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now, a man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder during the insurrection. And so the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. And then Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For Pilate realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him! Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! And so Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called the, together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! And then they struck his head with a reed, and spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. And after mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. And then they led him out to crucify him. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a trained tongue that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who will contend with me. Let us stand in court together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Word of God, word of life. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry Jesus' cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two rebels, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You would destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him.
Jesus in unswerving love for you proclaims to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. He has forgiven your weakness and your wickedness and has given you to his strength and goodness. Where once there was death, he brings to you life. Where once you were lost, he has searched for you and found you. His arms are stretched wide so that they might welcome you. In the blood of Jesus Christ, you have been washed of your sin and made into a new creation. When it was noon, a darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And when some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, He's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was God's son. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave and assuming human likeness. And being found in appearance as a human, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him even more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that at the name given to Jesus, every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph and Salome, who followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that Jesus was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. And then Joseph brought, bought a linen cloth and, taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. Here ends the passion of Jesus Christ according to Mark. I invite you to stand as you are able to receive this blessing. May Jesus dwell in your hearts just as he dwelt in the tomb. May you carry the life and death of Jesus with you throughout this holy week. And may you know that Jesus emptied himself for you, ministered for you, took risks for you, even died on a cross for you. And may the wondrous love that he has shown to and with you, give you peace, be with you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace now. Know that Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.